Hello everyone. In this 19th lesson of how to make your first game in Unity, we are going to create a splash screen for our game and we're also going to link all of our scenes together in their final order. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So you may have already noticed that I have brought in an extra texture just here. Now, I'm not going to distribute this um, because simply there's no point. But um, if you want to use text to create your splash screen, if you want to use an image to create your splash screen, if you don't even want a splash screen, I guess it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to use this logo that I've had created for many years now. But again, you can use anything you want. So what is a splash screen? A splash screen, in its simplest terms, is just a quick little screen that displays your name your publisher, your developer, whatever you want to call yourself, that would be the screen to normally show it. So some games have a couple, some games have one, some don't even have any, I guess. Um, but we have to keep in mind that if you are using the free version of Unity, you will end up with at least one splash screen. That one splash screen will be the Unity logo itself. And if you do play Unity games um, from Itch.io or somewhere, you probably will have seen it at least on a few occasions where the Unity logo is always the first splash screen to appear. Well, we're going to create the secondary splash screen, which, like I say, is the logo. So quickest, simplest way to do it is create a new scene. So file, new scene, file, and save as in our scenes folder. And we'll call this splash screen. Now, We've done it on a couple of occasions where we have created just a black background, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. My intention is just to have um, this logo kind of fade in and then fade out. So we're creating a small sequence of events in this tutorial. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI, and let's go to raw image. I'm gonna have this anchored stretched all the way, zero on everything and I'm going to have it completely black. Next thing, I'm going to add another image. So game object, UI, raw image. And this one is going to be centered. And let's keep it center. And I'm going to extend it outwards a little bit and then apply the game logo to the texture right there. And we can see that is pretty much how it would look. So in its simplest terms, there's our splash screen all good to go. But most, if I can get my words out, <laughs> Most splash screens have some kind of animation. They, they look a little bit different. They're not just plain like that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create an animation for it. And I think I'm going to have it fade in and rotate at the same time. So what I mean by that is if I change the rotation on the Y, you can see it turning like so. And although it's not going to make too much of a difference in the scene view, when it comes to creating it on the game view, it will indeed look kind of different. It won't look like that. So I'm going to have that set as 90. And if we go to game view, it's not even there. Even though we can see it, technically it's there because it's a 2D texture. There's no third dimension, so we can't see it. So I'm also going to change the alpha to zero. Now, this is going to be a cool little interesting um, piece that we do here. So I'm going to rename that raw image to just JV logo. And obviously you can do this with anything, any image, any text. You do what you want with it. It's your game at the end of the day. So let's create an animation for this. So animation, create, we'll call it splash intro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that kind of spin and fade in over the course of a second. So let's go uh, zero and set our first keyframe. So that's going to be everything that we have it set as now. So zero on the alpha and 90 on the Y rotation. So after 60 frames, we want it to be rotated to zero and we want the color to be completely opaque. So I'm going to leave that on screen for, let's say, four seconds, should we say? So then that's 240 frames. So 
at frame 300, we are then going to set the exact same again. So reset to 255 and let's put one on the Y and then zero again. All that does is just reset that keyframe. And if we scroll along, we should be able to see it has indeed set that keyframe. Now, after another second, I want it to rotate once again and fade out. So let's set that as 360. And let's set this to minus 90. And let's set the color to zero on the alpha. And let's press the record button to stop. And let's go back to our project window, click splash intro and untick loop time. And let's press play and see how that looks. OK, fair enough. Cool. So like I say, a lot of splash screens always have a little animation and you can do anything you want. That's just a cool little animation that I've put together there in what two minutes, maybe less than two minutes. So anything you want. Now let's create the sequence. But first, let's actually add this scene to our scene build. Now, the reason we're going to have to do this is that this um, splash screen will always have to be scene zero because it's the first scene that loads. So let's go to file, build settings and add open scenes. Now, if you remember last time I discussed about reordering these and putting them in a final order, this is what we're going to have to do because splash screen is going to be moved to the top, which now becomes scene zero. Main menu is now going to become scene one. And the sample scene, which we will end up renaming, as I've said, is going to be scene three. So scene three onwards are going to be all of our actual levels. So the first one, like I say, is going to be the splash screen. So we need to create a script to take us straight into the main menu after the six seconds that we've been on the splash screen. Remember, it is five seconds until we start fading out again. So it's six seconds on this scene. So let's go to our scripts folder. And let's right click, create C sharp script, and we'll call this splash to menu. And let's open it up in a Visual Studio. So this again is going to need the namespace in there for the scene manager. So using unity engine dot scene management semicolon. We can get rid of the update method. We don't need it. And we can get rid of annotations. This is going to be done inside a coroutine again, because we have to wait for six seconds before we can actually do anything because we want our splash to display. So what we need to do is say I enumerator and we can call this anything we want um, within reason. Obviously we'll call this proceed to menu, open close bracket and open curly brackets. Shouldn't put a space there. So we're going to wait for six seconds. So yield, return new, wait for seconds and in bracket six. And then after six seconds, we're going to say scene manager dot load scene and in brackets scene number one because one is now permanently our main menu. Now to start this coroutine, we need to state so in our start method. So start coroutine and in brackets, proceed to menu, open close bracket, close bracket again, semicolon and save. So that's all there really is to it. It's a very, very small sequence of events, obviously, because there's not a lot going on in this scene. And it doesn't really matter too much where we attach this script. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach it to the camera. Because realistically, there's no point adding an extra game object here when we can just indeed attach it to the camera. So let's save our scene. Let's press play. And let's make sure that this does indeed work and take us to our main menu. And there we go. We are on our main menu. Cool. So everything is going to go a bit haywire from here, as you can see. So if you start clicking things, it's going to take you different places now. So that's why we need to sort out the linking at this point. 
So we now have the final order of what our scripts, our scenes are going to be in. So we need to modify the scripts to reflect that. And that's not too difficult in all fairness. The best way of going through with all of this is to go to your scenes. And let's go to main menu. Now in here, we have a couple of items in our main menu. So let's click on the main menu there. So start game. That now needs to take us to, you can either do this because this is going to be a brand new game. You can either do this to scene number two or three. Both will end up with the same thing happening. So if we do two, it will take us to our respawn scene. If we do three, it'll just take us to directly to the scene anyway. So I think for all intents and purposes, we'll keep this as two to keep everything uniform. So let's make sure on our main menu, start game method takes us to scene two. That's good. Now, what we need to do is go through. In fact, we will load up the other scene just in case. We'll go through the scripts that are involved with this scene and just make sure that they all link correctly. So the camera follow doesn't need any change. The coin collect doesn't need any change. Coin rotation doesn't. Global coins doesn't need any change either. Global time will. So let's go into global time and make sure we have the correct scenes labeled and um, put down here. So here, respawning level, we're being taken to scene one, which is the main menu currently. We want to go to the respawning scene. So that means we need to change that to two and save. Okay, so going along to our next script, level complete, I don't think we've got anything in there just yet, have we? I think we future-proof that ready with the um, Unity Engine.c management because we're going to be doing that probably next tutorial creating um, next level. Uh, main menu we've sorted. The obstacle collision, uh, I do think we need to change, if I recall correctly, yes. So respawning once again needs to be changed to two. So that's now relinked correctly. Pause game. I believe that one will do as well. So let's check we've got everything correct here. So unpause game is fine. Restart level will have to take us to scene number two. Quit level. Now this can either take you back to the splash screen itself or the main menu. So you can either put zero or one for this one. I'm just gonna to go to one, go straight to the main menu, save a couple of seconds. I guess there's no real point going back to the splash screen unless you really, really want to. So that is the pause game set. And it's just updating. There we go. We don't need to do anything to play controls. Respawning. Uh, yes, I do think we need to. So when we respawn, we need to be sent to currently, it's going to be number three. However, we are going to deal with this a little bit more later on in the series because we need to be able to know that we actually are respawning in level one. Because if we respawn in level two, keeping it as three is just going to respawn us in level one. So we're going to need to modify that a little later on in the series. But for now, for all intents and purposes, we only have one level. So scene number three is fine. And the last script is that splash to menu that we've created earlier. So I'm going to save that now and I'm going to try and hope and pray that all of this works as intended. So let's go to our splash screen and let's press play and let's go through all of these linkings, all of these sequences and just make sure everything works as intended. You'll find yourself doing this quite a lot throughout development, doing the same things over and over. Uh, let's resume and then let's restart. That's fine. Let's quit the menu. Okay, so it looks like everything is linking correctly. So I'm happy with how that's now looking. So next video, what we're going to do is we are going to create the second level and we're going to create the transition to that second level. So what I mean by that is we're going to create the ability for the game to know that we've just completed level one and now we're going to level two. So when we restart, then we end up going back to level two where we left off.
So until that next video, thank you very much for watching, guys.